Just ahead on Crossroads, local heroes bring Christmas a little early for some kids in Grant County. Hear from the Grant County Health Department about how to keep the flu out of your house this year. We head out to Gas City to hear all about its Christmas light display. And follow along as people try to find and cut the perfect tree. It's all just ahead on Crossroads. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Crossroads. I'm Randall King. And I'm Shaylee Clark. And maybe we should be the first time to say at least here on Crossroads, Merry Christmas to you. Season is going on. Does it, does it feel that way to you yet? It does. I mean, especially when you come back to school after Thanksgiving, we have this set week and a half to celebrate Christmas with your friends. So, I mean, I felt, feel like I've been in the Christmas season also, now well, for a good well, week. That's good. Sometimes, sometimes I think in, in the academic circles that we travel, it's like so push, push to get finished. And then you don't feel like till that final grade is turned in or that final exam is done. But you get to celebrate. So that's good. You're feeling it. I am, and especially with the final exam. But I'm so excited <laughs> that it's Christmas. I love the tree well, we have here. On we Crossroads. always want to get at least one show where you have a chance to bring out the Charlie Brown tree and I'll, wear I'll... Christmas outfits. <laughs> there you go. You had to say I that. I got. To, I've been planning to wear this dress all year, so I'm excited. And I see you have your Christmas well, tie as well. People who are regular viewers of the show uh, know that I don't bring this one out every year because it has <laughs> a commercial character up here who we won't mention. He's known for being grumpy, maybe even a little grinchy, but. Um, <laughs> What I love is, is this part right here, which is the do it the yourself, light of tie. you know, because we do our own stunts on Crossroads. We also do our own special effects. That's perfect. Please tell me you're going to wear that to the family gathering as well. <laughs> I think it would work. Well, the most important question, we got a lot to, to talk about on this show about Christmas and on the next show, um, your household, Christmas Eve, Christmas morning. Christmas morning. There definitely. you go. There you go. Now, no, yeah. nothing against if you're a Christmas Eve family. I, I don't get it, but you got to have that morning of after that restless night, right? Exactly. I mean, you remember what it's like when you were a kid. Christmas yeah, I remember reading is... Twas the Night Before and waiting to hear the scratching on the rooftop. Exactly. And then you, you sneak down every 10 minutes to see, are the cookies gone? Oh, I missed him. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to find him, you know. But it's easy to say that Christmas is definitely more fun for the kids. Oh, yeah. You know, they can well, hardly wait to open their gifts. The parents with the young kids have a pretty good time, too. It, oh, yeah, getting woken up you, at 5 a.m. Check back with me in 10 years. You can, you can tell me what that's like. <laughs> it's, it's fun. But, you know, for some families, putting the gifts under the tree can be a bit of a challenge. Well, some local heroes stepped in as Santa's helpers, filling a shopping cart and checking some special gifts off of their list. Right. Tis the season to be giving. And some local heroes are making this a Christmas many kids will never forget. Jackson Selleck was one of the many kids at Meyer ready for some shopping. But it wasn't just mom who was going to help him fill the cart. Conservation officer Brad Robbins partnered with Jackson to make it a special Christmas. Officer's perspective, this program is ideal um, from several aspects. It gets us a chance to get out into the community in a different light, in a different aspect than what the community usually sees us in as police officers. Um, it, it's a joy, it's an honor to get out here and work with the kids. But before Jackson and his siblings could hit the toy aisle, Officer Robbins helped the kids find some nice shoes. And even some sparkly attire fit for a princess. Yes, they've been excited about it all week. Uh, Jackson, was, he thought it was yesterday and he got a little upset because it wasn't yesterday. He had to wait another day. Almost 80 local kids came to shop with a cop. The event helps relieve some Christmas stresses from families. I think it's a great program. Um, it's good to see that people still care. Um, I, I think, you know, it, it's just great, really great. And when the kids finally made it to the toy section. Yes. You like that? The siblings showed their shopping buddy how to shop like a kid. To see that smile at the end of the day and to get that thank you from mom or dad, uh, that means a lot to us. It's, it's humbling. The event gave officers an opportunity to bring Christmas joy to those in Grant County, but also a chance to show them who some real heroes are at the end of the day. Because that's what we are. Um, you know, we are here to help serve and protect the community. And with um, recent events and politics getting in the way, sometimes the public and sometimes the officers lose sight of that. And this is a good reminder for us as the officers that this is what we're here for. 
This Christmas blessing may not have come from a man with a white beard and a big red suit, but instead from some men with badges, ready to help their community by giving kids one more present under the tree this Christmas. Shaley, I have gone along on one of those Shop with a Cop times, and what fun that is to, to kind of see that whole thing come together, and especially look at that through, the, through their eyes. I really enjoyed it, but I think it was fun. You know, they kept talking about the smile on the kids' faces, but my favorite part was actually seeing the smile on the cops' faces because they were so glad to be there, and the fact that they came from all over. The one that we featured, he was from Kokomo. Mm -hmm. So I, I just think it was a great event. Yeah, and they probably kept you busy going through the store. Oh, yes, it was packed. <laughs> well, stay tuned. Later in the show, you'll see another time when we, we were on the move looking for a Christmas <laughs> tree. Move. Right now, when we come back, we're going to hear all about the flu season. Rosalinda Taylor from the health department tells us how we can stay healthy. Well, the holidays are here, of course, and that usually means sneezes and coughs are right behind it. Suppress it, Shaylee. Don't uh. cough. She's feeling it. <laughs> so we've asked Rosalinda Taylor to talk about how we can stay away from the flu and lots of other things that Shaylee seems to be catching. And that, that leads to, my, to my, my first question about this. One of the things that we, we don't talk a lot about at the holidays is there's a lot of people run down. You're stressed, you're shopping, you're taking final exams. <laughs> uh. And I, I guess the first step is people really do need to be aware of their overall health right. at this time of year. What are some just some basic things they need to make sure they're doing? Um, basically, wash their hands. Um, make sure that you know they're on a well-balanced diet. They're drinking their fluids. No, well, well-balanced diet <laughs> in the holidays. There we go. We lost that's that that's very one. difficult, right? Exactly. Um, but basically, is to keep your hands washed constantly. If you know someone is sick, to keep your distance because the flu is actually transferred from droplets. So if I would cough and you know you're right beside me, you could I'm actually sorry. get the flu if you weren't protected. Um, so those are some of the main things that we really want people to concentrate on and getting the flu vaccine. Number one, um, we have. Have three different types that we offer and um, we have an intradermal which goes right under the skin a lot of people love that because you don't have the muscle achiness after you get that one um, we do have the im which is the traditional that everyone usually gets and we also have a flu mist which is intranasally and i guess i always just figured that anyone can go get the flu shot i know i always have what is, are there limitations for people? Can some people not go get them? Well, the CDC recommends that anyone six months of age and older receive the flu vaccine. However, there are times where people have certain um, immunity issues where they are not able to get one. Um, for instance, if someone has ever had Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a weakening illness, um, the CDC recommends that they not get the flu shot. Um, we also let the community know and educate that if you're not feeling well, we'd like for you to feel better before you come in. Because as you, when you come in to get the flu shot, we have no way of knowing if your immune was compromised from being around someone who was sick. You know, like say that you had the flu, you transferred it to me, I'm not feeling well, and then I go in and I get the flu shot. Well, nine times out of ten, it's because I was already subjected to um, the infection before I got the immunization. I have to confess, I never got a flu shot until about six or seven years ago when okay. I think I had a really, really bad round. The next year I said, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting it. And I, I wonder if there's still some barriers other than just getting the time to do it. What are some sort of mental barriers or some myths maybe people have about the flu vaccine that keep them from coming in? I think a lot of people, you know, a lot of people get caught up in all everyone's stories and different things rather than based on the facts. Um, they obviously do a lot of tests and different things and nothing is 100%. However, they have done a study that shows that um, 70 out of every 100 individuals that receive the flu vaccine actually are able to avoid getting a severe, uh, moderate to severe uh, flu infection. And to me, those odds are pretty promising. So, <laughs> seventy out of a hundred, but everybody's always got that one. Like you said, well, my grandpa <laughs> he got one. sicker after the flu shot, and that's it. You know, it's funny how we take one and generalize exactly. from it. Exactly, and they do tell us. I mean, the CDC tells us that you know it, it is also based on you know your health. It's based on your age. Obviously, we had over one hundred um, children in the U.S. last year that actually passed away from getting the flu. So I tell people, even if you can, you know, help protect them from getting the flu, it could literally save their life. To me, it's worth it. And um, 
So let's say you're getting the flu. What are some different steps that you can take to maybe make it not so terrible? <laughs> like you didn't get the shot, you're starting to get it. What can you do about that? We definitely educate to stay, make sure that you stay up on your fluids, you know, and that you are eating. A lot of people when they don't feel good, um, they just kind of want to lay there and they don't want to get up and do, because none of us feel good. But definitely making sure you're hydrated is number one. Um, and something else too that a lot of people, they, they call their doctor and they say, I want an antibiotic. And so we educate and let people know that the flu is a virus, so it has to be treated with antivirals rather than antibiotics, which you treat for bacteria. Um, but lots of rest. And we educate also to stay away. If you know that you've got the flu because it is transmitted by droplets, you know, stay away, stay home. She you wanted know? you to sit here and say she didn't have to take her <laughs> final exams. That would be a good you thing. You still have to take your hey, final Can you exam. write my note, please? <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> <laughs> Grant County Health Department is one of many places you can get the shot and other services. So yes. let's quickly tell people what is available here in town if you, especially if you need something, uh, you know, you need these services in particular. Um, one of the main things that we do offer is um, tuberculosis testing a lot. You have to have that obviously to start a job. We offer that for $10. That's one of the cheapest in the area. Um, as well as we offer blood pressure screenings, cholesterol screenings, we offer glucose screenings. Um, we teach you for universal precautions, CPR training, and there's a long list. <laughs> yeah, and so you'd rather take appointments now. We, we hear yes, that. Yes, absolutely. What we did in the new year starting in January is we are transitioning over from walk-ins to appointment only. Obviously, as time goes on, we will lessen the amount of walk-ins that we accept because we are now accepting insurance, which is something new for the county. Um, and so we are trying to educate the community that we do accept insurance now and a uh, pro bono for them is that they don't actually have to pay the copay, which is a savings to them. So there are a lot of services available people don't know about and it is, yes. it is so much better. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but it sounds <laughs> so much better to get ahead of this and be preventive and then uh, instead of being defensive all the yes. time. Yes, and something we are highly promoting is our Facebook page. So we would like to encourage the community to come out and like us. Just Grant, Can Grant County Health Department? Yes, Grant County Great. Health Department. Great. Well, if you want to know more about information, mm -hmm. you can go to that Facebook phase or you can page or you can also call the Grant mm -hmm. County Health Department. It's 662-0377 and you use the extension 112. Thank you, Rosalinda. Thank you. Great information. Well, when we come <laughs> back, we're going to head out to Gas City. Hear from Dave Pyle about this year's Gas City lights display. Well, welcome back to Crossroads. We are on location at the other walkway in Grant County, and that's the Gas City Walkway. Dave Pyle is here from the Gas City Park Board. And Dave, I say the other the other walkway, but this is beautiful lights out here on, on the pond. Yeah, thank you. What? Uh, how did this get started, and how long has this been going on? Oh, how did it get started? That was before my time. Uh, <laughs> it's about 20 years. Uh, every year we grow a little bit. We did shrink a little bit this year because we had a flood last year that wiped out quite a bit of stuff and we had some vandalism. But uh, I just actually talked to the mayor the day before yesterday and got permission to go and we're gonna head over to GP Design and Marion get some more stuff ordered. So we'll have some, some more things coming this year. So 20 years you know, ago you started this. Anything new this year that you're really excited about for people to see? Well, we'll know that when we get over to GP Design. They have so much stuff. I just it's amazing some of the things that they put together over there and yeah we're looking forward to having the having some new stuff it's a real nice tradition i'm just i'm just thinking about things like ducktail run here and and we come out here every summer for the concerts right you can come back to the same place in the park and just drive around and you, you know all the reflection off the lake and things like that it's beautiful how, how much work does it take to get that ready it is beautiful uh the guys the electric department puts this together and uh, they start after halloween and uh, as long as they get done before Thanksgiving kind of thing, they work that in around the other things that they're responsible for. They do a really good job with it, so. And if people want to come here, does it cost any money for anyone to come? There is no charge. We do take donations. Um, if you don't want to donate, can't donate, that's fine. We welcome you out anyway. Stop and get a candy cane. Enjoy the time. We were setting up, and it's not a brutally cold night, but it's cold enough. So it's, we can call it a walkway, but I bet just like in Marion, people stay in their cars. Well, we actually just had the couple get out of their car and start walking right before they we started. They did do that. That wouldn't be me tonight. <laughs> uh, yes, I would be driving. But yeah, people are welcome to come out on warmer nights and walk as well. And do you see a lot of people come out every year? Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, you have the after dinner rush. You've got the before the end rush. Uh, really, Christmas Eve is amazing out here because the line is long. And and uh, it's one of our best nights in donations as well. So if you haven't been to Gas City, to Beamer Park and seen, Beamer Park, right? Beaner. Beaner, yeah. Beaner, gotta get that right. 
If you haven't seen this one, take advantage of one more beautiful way to celebrate the tradition in Gas City. Yes, in Grant County. by all means. Come so out. let's take a closer look. Thanks, Dave. Let's take a closer look now at what you see when you come over here. When we come back, get in on the tradition of cutting down the Christmas tree. We head out to a tree farm just ahead. Well, welcome back to Crossroads and our Christmas show. Shaylee, this is kind of fun. We always thank our friends over at the McCon Coffee Shop on campus here for providing this year, hot chocolate for us. Is that what you have there? It is hot chocolate. Not coffee or tea or anything like that. A fun Christmas tradition. It is, it is fun. And the crew all looks forward to it, but they don't get this until we're done with it. So <laughs> we get first steps. I'm okay with that. This is actually fun. So we thank McCon for helping us out there. And, and I got to know at this segment in the show, another Christmas tradition in your household, Christmas trees. You ever picked your own one out? You know, we haven't. We've always done the fake tree, but I like to blame the cats for this one. Oh. You know, when you have cats, you know, knocking down a live tree in the house, it just doesn't go very yeah, well. Yeah, the cat in the house has done that to us. I, I did not only just a live tree, but I did cut my own Christmas tree. I mean, this must have been age 17 or something like that. I think I was home from college one, one year, and we went out to a Christmas tree farm in the state of Virginia. And it was it was amazing. I still remember. It's only did it one time. And did you string the popcorn together too to put around no. it? <laughs> oh, you, you know that you know that movie Christmas Vacation where they had the large tree on the car. We didn't do anything quite like that either. But it is a great tradition. And you might think those Christmas tree farms are something you got to go back east, like I just mentioned, to find that. You wouldn't find that in the Midwest. Is that what you're thinking? Maybe too flat. Too flat corn. <laughs> too many fields. Hanging yes. on the corn. But you would be wrong. In fact. There's one we found less than an hour from Grant County with such a, so many choices you could lose yourself for a few hours just trying to decide. But those really won't be lost hours because eventually you'll chop down a memory that lasts longer than the season. Ready to cut your own? Don't drive hours looking for mountains and forest. 60 acres and even Santa are waiting for you in central Indiana. Scotch is what you see a lot of people get scotch pines. Maybe we should try this. Dwayne Orr and Cal Aranda of Pendleton have been here before, so they should get it done quickly, like guy shopping, right? This is a good looking tree right here. Does it smell fruity? Ready to go pick a tree? All right, let's do it. Okay, so maybe there's hope with Steve and Trisha Thompson from Anderson. They brought three-year-old Gemma along for her first try. Oh, I don't like any little trees, because I like big trees. Are these the kinds you want, or do you want to, I think those are different kinds over there. What about this tall one? Is that too tall? <laughs> There's a big hole. What do you think of this one, Jim? Um, hmm. Hmm. Let me see. No. No? Okay, she said no. Once more into the breach, plenty of rows and sizes to explore. This do-it-yourself adventure comes courtesy of Brian Hildebrand, who will meet you at the end. Always nice to have a business where you have happy customers. And Vicki Hildebrand, who you'll see just about everywhere else if you can keep up. This day she's making wreaths. They both retired about 15 years ago from teaching school. Now they run an open air classroom of memories. The kids getting out of the car, hopping to come and cut, you know, get their equipment to cut a tree down. The favorite part of the job is the rhythm of everything moving along nicely. It's just very festive. Now cutting your own isn't for everyone. 
so they have pre-cut trees and an even warmer gift shop full of trinkets and sweets. But most still seem to come for the decision as much as the decor. What do you think? Don't get that one? Sure. Eventually, fatigue, sunset, or cold forces their saw hand. We have fun coming out here. We make a day, you know, we come out here, pick out a tree, then probably usually have dinner and stuff, you know, just make a good day of it. We enjoy it. It's better than going to a tree lot. And what about Gemma? In this playground, she left the final cut to mom and dad a while ago. You don't like this one? I like it. I like it. Okay. We like the do-it-yourself experience. Mm -hmm. It's fun, you get to pick it. There's, instead of just going to like the gas station and picking one up. The sights and the smells, you know, of, of being on a tree farm, um, you know, kind of help get you in the Christmas mood and, you know, start the holiday off right. Like the many who come to Millbrook, the catch of the day will soon be tied up and heading home. But we suspect Gemma will be back next year. You can toss the tree, but the good cheer of this memory is evergreen. So Randall, you followed around everyone. Did you find everyone? Everyone. <laughs> there was, there was lot. You know, I, I didn't exercise that day, but I really did. I mean, did you find that people were quick to pick their tree? I mean, just go in, chop it down, and get no. going, or was it? No. Oh, every little branch. You has know what to be shopping's like, perfectly. don't you? Uh, that's true. It's shopping. I Shopping for a tree? And there were ladies present, not to be sexist or anything. But, so were the ladies but, more but opinionated? To be, to be fair, you, in the story it was clear that some men had some trouble deciding too. And I mean, did the whole tree have to be perfect or just at least, because I'm thinking at least one side there needs to no be. There is no perfect tree, there are only great trees. Oh. And the other ones that need a little love. But it, it was Life lessons from Yorktown. Was, there, there you go. <laughs> and people should check it out. It's not far from Grant County at all. Got there very easily on the interstate. Millbrook Farm's a great place to go. Well, I'm going to have to look into getting a live tree. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Well, we want you to know that we value your input on the show. And if you have any ideas for stories or want to comment on something you've seen here on Crossroads, you can email us at crossroads at nwes.edu. That's crossroads at I-N-D-W-E-S dot E-D-U. Or if you're more for writing a letter, you can drop us one at W-I-W-U-T-V, 4201 South Washington Street, Marion, Indiana, 46953. Or check out past episodes of the program. Check out all of our local programming by visiting our website, WIWUTV.com. You put the slash crossroads on there and you'll go right to our segments. And while you're online, Always check out our Facebook and Twitter pages, whether you're there or on your phone. You get a behind the scenes look at what we're doing here as we get out in the community. It's facebook.com slash WIWUTV or follow us on Twitter at WIWUTV. And Shaylee, just as Christmas is not over, Christmas for Crossroads is not over. We have more stories to tell in the weeks ahead. And let's enjoy this time when we're inside with our warm hot chocolate before we head out to the walkway I just, of light. I, yeah, I just want to come weather. up with a fireplace. I think I'm putting my requisition for that on the set next year. Oh, a working that's a fireplace. great idea. Someone else will chop the wood, but that I would be really, really good. I wouldn't oppose. <laughs> so we're glad you're part of this. For everyone who's worked on this program, I'm Randall King. And I'm Shaylee Clark. The Crossroads of Life bring people together, and that's what we try to do here each week. Thanks for watching, everyone. So long and Merry Christmas.